Hello everyone, welcome back to our Marketing Cloud API series. In this video, we will see how to set up the SOAP UI client to work with the Marketing Cloud APIs. We'll also see how to import the SOAP API WSDL and set it up in SOAP UI, review the different uh, SOAP envelopes that are available, see how to get um, the access token uh, through the REST API in SOAP UI, and then try it in a example SOAP API request. Okay. So first you will need the SOAP UI client um, I've already downloaded that and installed it. Um, so if you don't have it, please go ahead and download that uh, for your uh, specific operating system. Install that and once you open it up, uh, go ahead and create a new workspace. I created a workspace called uh, SFMC API series and this is where I will be adding the projects for the, the SOAP API and the REST API. So first we'll be creating uh, the SOAP API uh, request, uh, the project. So click on the, the SOAP uh, icon that you see here. Um, it will ask you to provide a project name. So I'm just going to give uh, SFMC SOAP API project. Okay, and then for the WSDL, um, we need to like get the WSDL that's available for the Marketing Cloud SOAP API. Um, so this is the URL to it. I will provide that in the description of the video as well. So you will see here, this is the SOAP API endpoint uh, as well as the, the WSDL that you will need to use. So the first part of it is definitely, uh, as you guessed, your uh, tenant specific uh, SOAP URL followed by etframework.wisdl. So to get this, uh, we will go to our install package, uh, copy the, the base URI for the SOAP uh, API. Okay, let's go back to our SOAP UI here and we'll paste that. Okay, and then we need to append it with the ET framework. Okay, so let me just copy that across. Let's see. And control V. There you go. So once you have that, uh, that's the WSDL URL. Um, you can leave these checkboxes as is. Go ahead and click OK. We'll take a few seconds to uh, load the WSDL and then load all the envelopes. So there you go. Uh, you will see the, the project has been loaded uh, with the WSDL and you will see all the different methods that are supported by the SOAP API uh, for Marketing Cloud. And um, if you go into a few of these, you will see that they already have like sample envelopes available. Like for the request, if I click on it, so it will show me the envelope that you will need to use for a, requ uh, for a retrieve request. Uh, let's say I click one for create. So that's a different one and you will see like it's a create request. So like that you will see um, uh, uh, envelopes for all the different methods that are available in SOAP API. Now how do you use uh, these envelopes that you have, right? Um, so for that you need to refer to the documentation uh, available as part of uh, the Marketing Cloud API documentation Salesforce. Uh, if you scroll down you will see the different methods and objects. Uh, the objects will provide the different properties but then if you want to see some uh, you know development scenarios you can actually go down uh, and then you will see like uh, the different scenarios that you can see here um, um, under uh, simple development scenarios and then you can drill down. So under retrieve a subscriber there was one with specifically for retrieving subscribers by a subscriber key. right? So I just selected that as a sample scenario uh, and then when you scroll down it will actually show you how to implement this from uh, different uh, code, external client codes that you have, like either .NET or PHP. But then, if you have um, the, if you want to like, you know, use the sample SOAP envelope, then this is the sample code uh, that they provided as well. So you can uh, go through this, uh, figure out like, okay, what are the basic uh, different tags that you will need to use, then work that out with the, your um, SOAP UI envelopes that you have, and and then customize that uh, to get the specific data that you're looking for. Now, what I usually do is like I don't um, you know, uh, overwrite uh, each of these um, template envelopes that I have here. Uh, what I do is like I always create a clone of that one because then I can always go back and refer to the, the main um, envelope that had all the different parameter tags in there. Um, so for this retrieve, let's say I wanted to like, you know, try out uh, retrieving a data extension, right? Um, so I'll go ahead and clone that here and then I will just type in uh, retrieve de request so let me go ahead and save that um, and then um, I already have a sample code that I probably want to try out so let me copy paste that across here Let's see and then I'll overwrite 
what we have here because there's a lot more tags that I probably don't need. So this is a much uh, smaller and simpler one that I uh, had used earlier. Um, so as you can see, like um, I will um, uh, use only the properties that I want, uh, you know, to retrieve from the SOAP API. Uh, and in this particular case, I'm using a filter where the customer key equals contact underscore Salesforce. So I'm looking for a synchronized data extension with that name. Um, and then it will try and return me the data if it can find that. Okay. Now, one thing that you will see here in the header, uh, you will see the fuel auth uh, with the access token. So I need to replace this with an actual uh, REST API access token uh, that I uh, that I can get through a, a REST API call. Okay. Now you'll also notice that the URL automatically uh, shows up as your tenant specific um, SOAP API URL and it's always appended with the service.asmx as we have seen before. Uh, it does not use the different routes like we how we have seen in uh, you know the REST API scenarios. Okay, so now to get the uh, access token, uh, we have to use the uh, REST API call. Uh, so for that, let's go ahead and create a REST API project. So click on the REST here. Uh, and then we need to provide the auth URL with the V2 token uh, in order to get the access token, right? So we'll go back to our install package, uh, copy the auth URL, not the REST one, even though it's a REST call, uh, copy the auth. Uh, let's go back to the SOAP UI here, paste that and slash V2 slash token is the route. Okay, go ahead and click OK. And then uh, this will load the, the REST project. Uh, make sure this is a post request uh, and you confirm it's the route is V2 token. And here uh, you have to ensure that the content type is application JSON. Um, and then we go ahead and add our JSON body. Let me just copy that across. So as you may remember from our previous videos, um, to get the accessed uh, token, you need to provide the grant type uh, as client credentials, the client ID, uh, the client secret. Uh, these two are, uh, or these three, uh, the account ID as well, these three are the values that I have um, already in our uh, install package and from my MID here. So let me go back here. So we've confirmed that uh, the, the data is correct and then set the output to JSON. Let's go ahead and run this to see if we can get our access token. Okay, there you go. Uh, we received the correct data back. So I'm gonna copy this access token and then use it in the retrieve the example that we saw earlier. Okay, coming back to our retrieve DE and just going to paste it okay there you go okay now let's try this uh, retrieve the soap api request and there you go that was successful overall status is okay uh, and it did bring back uh, data about that particular data extension uh, that we requested uh, is sendable is true it did give us the sendable subscriber field etc right so if there are other properties that are available for the data extension uh, object over here uh, and if you want to add that in, you can always go ahead and add that with an additional Power Properties tag. Okay. Now, one thing that you need to know is uh, in the SOAP envelope here, um, there is something called as WSA addressing, WSA um, tag that you will uh, end up using, uh, especially if you're in Postman. Uh, it will look for this WSA action uh, tag. Right. Uh, in in uh, the SOAP uh, UI uh, envelope over here, it's not explicitly stated in the request, but it's there here in the in the bottom properties. And if you look at the action, uh, this this is a retrieve request, and the action is already given as retrieve. But when you use it in in other clients like Postman, um, because they don't have this particular UI interface, uh, you have to explicitly put that tag like how you see it here, WSA action. You have to put that in the request with the the specific. Uh, action uh, type that you are trying to request. So if it's a retrieve action, then you need to make it as retrieve. So if you go into, let's say, uh, one of the cr uh, different uh, methods like the create, if you go and click the WSA, you will see the action is create. So that's what actually tells the SOAP API, like, you know, what's the specific request type that's coming in. Okay. So that's basically the setup you will need to connect uh, to the Marketing Cloud APIs from uh, SOAP UI. Uh, I mostly use Postman for testing out both the REST and SOAP API requests, but then uh, at times like if I need to review the SOAP envelopes um, and then try out a few of these SOAP API requests that may not be in the Postman collection, then I do use the SOAP UI tool to you know, try some of the scenarios as well. 
Well, I hope this was useful. Um, and in the next video, we will explore some of the REST API requests in the Postman collection. Okay. Thank you for watching.